You're watching Drake Wing Gaming. Enjoy the video. Hey guys, Derry here from Drake Wing Gaming, and as some of you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today I'm coming at you with a Let's Play episode of Psychic Connections: Aiden's Path. So, the last place we left off was we had joined Aiden in the library with some for some delicious pot pies, which is kind of a coincidence. I actually have a pot pie in the fridge right now. Uh, but I'm actually thinking of getting a nice, lovely burrito today from, uh, Chipotle. Oh, lord. Oh, no! No! Can't talk about food right now. I'm too hungry. But anyway, guys, let's resume here. We were learning about Aiden's admittedly unusual childhood and his nanny named Manny. Anyway, right back into it we go. <clears throat> okay. I've grown up my whole life working towards it, and it's all I've ever wanted. Well, that and a jetpack when I was six. I had convinced myself that I'd make a push for the tech industry to look into the technology. I grew out of that, though. That's true. Jetpacks might be a little silly. Oh, don't get me wrong. With enough research, I'm confident we could develop them. It just became clear that I'd likely never be able to use one. Why is that? I struggle to maintain my composure at higher altitudes. You're afraid of heights? No! Don't be ridiculous. I just find great discomfort in not having my feet properly placed on the ground. So, you're afraid of flying? I frequently struggle with the experience, yes. It's a perfectly rational fear. After all, in the event of a major malfunction or hijacking, death is nearly certain. When was the last time you were on a plane? Aiden shifts uncomfortably while poking at his pot pie, trolling the goopy contents around in a little tinfoil pan. It was about three years ago. It went well, mostly. Once I was sedated. They sedated you? It was perfectly reasonable. I wasn't allowing myself to be restrained. Anyway, that's enough personal discussion. We came to find good reference material for our projects. Have you chosen a constellation yet? Not yet. I was thinking I'd just choose one of the more common ones, like the Big Dipper. I suppose that's one approach, though you may find the instructor will be more impressed if you make a less common choice. For example, I intend to use Ceph I intend to use Cepheus for my project. Aiden enters an impossibly boring monologue about the subject of his project. I try giving him my attention, but I feel my brain shutting down due to a lack of stimulation. <laughs> I'm boring you, aren't I? But no No I'm very interested in uh Capricus Cepheus. It's fine. I've been told my explanations can be a bit dry at times. Instead of listening to be drone on, how about we hit the books instead? Hold up. Okay, thought I heard a weird noise by one of my cats playing around. Sounds like a good idea. Aiden grabs one of the two books in front of us and cracks it open, his eyes scanning the pages intently. I follow suit and grab the other book. Opening it, I find myself staring at the, tini at the tiniest font I've ever seen. It seems like, I, like it might take a while. How do you suppose I find anything relevant? Start at the table of contents. From there, I suggest using your eyes to read the text and take note of info you might use. Was that sarcasm at the end there? Please, Mason. We, can, we can't spend all of our time talking. Right. Sorry. I should have known the second we got Aiden started, we would be all work and no play. I'm sure I'll be more open to small talk after a bit of work. Hopefully I can find a moment to talk about the Jude situation. Somewhere between an hour and an eternity passes us by in complete silence. I've actually surprised myself and found a couple of interesting notes on Pavo, the Peacock constellation. Yet, there hasn't been a single chance to talk to Aiden about Jude. Shouldn't he be able to feel, to feel my burning desire to discuss this with him? Maybe he did notice, and he simply ignored it. I see Quinn is putting the phone I got him to good use. Ah, <clears throat> sorry, let me do that. I see Quinn is putting the phone I got him to good use. Hey gang, got a new phone! I miss talking to you all so much! Wait, you got him a new phone? Of course. It's inconvenient for us all if he's without one, and it would take him quite a while to replace his own. I do the same for any of the others. This is my chance! Even Jude? I suppose, even Jude. Although this presumes he would accept the gift. Have you spoken to him at all since yesterday? No. 
We haven't crossed paths since, and it's not like he'd ever answered my calls regardless. I discussed the matter with Zoe, and she intends to talk with Jude on my behalf. That's not really a solution, though, is it? Wouldn't it be better to just talk through your issues like adults? Like I didn't, like I'd never thought of that. The problem is that Jude doesn't care to listen to me. Apparently, I have a tendency to lecture him. I try to be civil, but it still ends with him often yelling in my face. I'll admit, it has been a while, but this will pass like so many other things before it. But what about... Aiden stops me holding his hand up while he reads something off of his phone. I hear a distinct click of his tongue before he turns back towards me. My apologies, Mason, but I'm afraid I must cut our time together short. There's a small business emergency I must attend to. Oh, that sounds important. I guess we can talk about this later. I'm glad you're being understanding about it. I'll message you later tonight in regards to our weekend plans with Zoe. Weekend plans? Camping, remember? We discussed going this weekend. Right! Sorry, I've just had a lot on my mind. I spaced out for a minute. Aiden regards me with a look of concern before being pulled away by the buzzing of his phone. He looks at his phone, then back at me before shaking his head in frustration. Aiden grabs the books he'd brought and walks out of the library while simultaneously taking his phone call. Watching him leave, I'm left to wonder how often he bounces between school and work like this without a break. I feel like I would be completely stressed out if I was constantly on the go like that. Looking at the time, and with nothing keeping me here, I decide to return to my room. Walking to my room, I see Quinn sitting on the lower bunk, playing on what appears to be a new phone. Hey Quinn, I'm back! Oh, Mason! How'd your hot date go? Stop that. It wasn't a date. I know, but you're fun to tease. This bunny is going to be the death of me, I swear. How did things go with Zoe? About as well as one can expect. I got a new phone and some cream for my eye. <laughs> no! Bad! Horny into horny jail you go. She said she'd be stopping by again after her class. Ah, speak of the devil. By the way, Mason, be sure to add the others' numbers to your phone. Blah, 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 blah. Mason! Zoe! I just got out of class. Is Quinn still there? Yeah, he is. Awesome. Okay, don't let him leave. I'm on my way now. Uh-oh. I guess she's on her way over. Darn, and here I thought we'd have time for some roommate bonding. Did she say what she wanted? No, but I guess we'll know when she gets here. This is what I was talking about before, by the way. She starts acting crazy whenever something like this happens. I'm going to go ahead and save right here. I feel like she isn't acting that crazy, though. If anything, Quinn is underrating, is under, is underacting to how serious the situation is. He was punched in the face last night, basically forced to leave his own room. Maybe I just have a lower tolerance, but if it were me, I would have flipped out already. Meanwhile, he's acting like it's no big deal. So, what do you want to do while we wait? Oh, that was fast. Sure enough, on the other side of the door stood a red panda that had been that had been by earlier today. All right, I rushed over here as quickly as I could. Did you forget something? Why did you rush over? Well, we need to get Quinn's old room key and replace it with a key to your room. Additionally, we need to get his things from his old room. Are you sure we need to do that? I don't have that much stuff. Yes, we do. I also need to have a conversation with Greg anyway. I'm sure he'll lie to me, but I am required to listen to his side of the story. Quinn's energy seems to deflate at the prospect of seeing his previous roommate again. I don't blame him either. Greg seems like a serious asshole. Don't stress about it, Quinn. Zoe and I will back you up. We'll grab your stuff, let your roommate know he's a, and let your roommate know he's a giant prick, and then mosey. Alright. If you want, I can call the others too if you feel like you need more help. N no! Just the three of us should be fine. Let's just get this over with. Following Quinn out the door, he leads us towards his dorm room, which is located at the end of the, which is located at the, end of the hall. We were on the same floor. Huh. Well, at least that means we won't have to worry. We won't have to carry anything upstairs. Plus, who knows? Maybe he won't even be in the room. Yeah. Quinn slides his keycard into the door with a click. He opens it, leading us into his former room. 
The first thing I notice are the clothes thrown about everywhere. The place looks like a mess and smells faintly like tobacco. The second thing is a large alligator laying in one of the bunks carving a wooden stump with a knife. This must be Greg. He's a little bigger than I'd pictured in my head. He looks up at us and gives a very and gives us a very nasty look. Let's see if I can do douchebag accent. The fuck do you all want? <laughs> I don't know what the hell that was. Greg, I presume. We're here for Quinn's stuff. Oh, you moving out, short stack? Thank fuck, I got tired of dealing with your crap. Hurry up and take what you need and get out. No problem. Zoe looks at Quinn, who nods at her before rushing over to the closet and grabbing a duffel bag that he begins filling with his things. Greg lays back in his bunk. Occasionally, he tilts his head to look at something, grinning to himself. It isn't until I follow his eyes that I realize he keeps looking at Zoe's ass whenever she bends over to grab something for Quinn. I know I shouldn't cause problems, that I should grit my teeth, but everything this guy does is pissing me off. I must have been staring, because his beady eyes soon focus on me and his face twists into a scowl. You got a problem, String Bean? I've got a few. But for starters, I'd appreciate it if you stopped staring at my friend's ass. He what? Hey now, I'm just enjoying the view. It's a compliment. Besides, what's it to you? Is she a girlfriend or something? With how girly your face is, I figured you were probably a snowflake like Cottontail over there. That's it. I don't care if he's bigger, I'm gonna slam my face in his ugly snout. I take a step forward, but Quinn grabs my hand. I feel him shaking. He must be so freaked out. Then I realize that he's not the one shaking. I am. I'd gotten so worked up I was trembling and I hadn't even noticed. No wonder he didn't want you to know about this. He would have caved this guy's skull in by now. Look, Greg, I'm an RA. After we're finished here, I plan on reporting you for physical violence. Do you really want to add sexual harassment to what the Dean ends up reading? Oh no, I wouldn't want to be reported to the Dean. That'd just be awful. Don't look like I care. You're free to try. You've got a pretty good face too, by the way. Maybe when you're done helping these losers, you'll stop back by. The thought of what you're implying makes me want to gag. Well, I figured the gagging could wait till you came back. But fine, plenty of other chicks that want me. We've been in here for not even ten minutes, and I already want to kill him. How did Quinn even go almost a week with this guy? Hey, uh, Mason, can you grab that microwave? Hell no, you are not taking my microwave. It, it's not yours. My friend Elliot got it for me. Right, and you left it here, which makes it mine. It's literally a law. Pretty sure that only applies after an extensive period of time and on your property. You don't own this dorm room. The college does. So, we're taking the microwave. You know, you're starting to piss me off, bitch. Zoe and Greg begin staring daggers at each other while I grab the microwave like Quinn asked. Did you have anything else? No, this is basically everything. Zoe, quit trying to melt the douche with your brain and let's go. He's lucky I can't melt him with my brain, big dumb scale piece of... Dragging Zoe out of the room, I give the large alligator one final glare before slamming the door behind us. With a microwave in my hand, a small monitor in Zoe's hand, and a large duffel in Quinn's, we all return to my room. Pulling Quinn's things into the room, we all release the built-up tension after having to deal with Greg. May we never have to deal with him again. Well, hopefully we won't. I still have to deal with him throughout the reporting period. I'm gonna make sure that asshat get what's coming to him. You need you need help unpacking? No, I've got my duffel full of stuff, and I'm not in any rush. Honestly, all I want to do is shut my eyes and skip straight to the weekend. No, oh, speaking of the weekend... Zoe grabs me and pulls me to the side. She looks behind us at Quinn before speaking to me in a hushed tone. So, I was thinking we should bring the others camping with us this weekend. Huh? I'm not opposed, but why? 
Well, Quinn clearly needs to pick me up, and I tried fixing things with Jude and Aiden, but they need a good push. Elliot has a car that he could take us all in, and it could really help bond the whole group. It's a win-win. Plus, I've got some ideas for testing what your psychic ability might be. They might not work, but I won't know until we try. I guess. It's not like I had any other plans this weekend. Are you sure the others are going to be okay with this? Let me save right here, guys. No, I'm sure it'll work out. Though, maybe don't tell Aiden or Jude that the other will be there. How did you hear that? Quinn's face becomes unamused as he proceeds to point at the giant appendages sticking out of his skull. Right! Big ears aren't for show. Seems silly we even tried to have a secret discussion. Alright, it's settled then. I'll text the others and make arrangements. I'll have to do it outside the group channel to keep, dis to keep suspicions low. Aw, this is gonna be so great! We'll roast marshmallows, tell scary stories, and then just look at the stars! When are we going? Tomorrow afternoon. Aiden doesn't have any classes, and I only have one in the morning. Quinn and I share one, Quinn and I share one at noon. Is that going to be a problem? It shouldn't be. It should only take us about an hour to get there. So if you meet us at the cafe right now, or a ca at the cafe right now after, we should be good to go. Sounds good. This is actually pretty exciting. I can't remember the last time I'd ever done anything remotely like camping. It feels like I've been cooped up so much over the past year. So this is going to be a good change of pace. Well then, I'll see you both tomorrow. Bye, Zoe. Zoe leaves, and I see the big goofy smile on Quinn's face. Until now, I hadn't noticed, but his nose twitches when he's excited. Gah! I'm not sure I'm going to be able to sleep tonight. This is so exciting. Are you sure this? Are you sure you should be excited about this, though? I mean, are you sure you should be this excited, though? What do you mean? Well, have you thought about how you're going to explain the black eye? Fuck! I didn't even think about that. That's why Zoe wanted me to come, so I'd have to explain it to the others. Ooh, she's crafty, that one. What am I gonna do? You could always tell the truth. Right. And do you think uh, and do you think Jude's just going to leave Greg alone knowing what he did? No, little kitty, you can't come up here. You're being a silly boy. You silly little boy. Honestly, no. But he's also your best friend. Quinn tugs on his ears and bites his... Quick... Quinn tugs on his ears and bites on his lip while pacing around the room. I'll just have to think of something, that's all. If you say so. For the rest of the night, Quinn makes half-baked plans on how to explain his black eye. The leading contenders before we started winding down for bed were tipping into a, or tripping into a doorknob and getting hit by a football. I'm still not sure I support needing to come up with some lie, but it's not like I can force him to tell the truth. Well... Probably could, but it's not exactly something I should do. It's Aiden. I wonder what he wants. Hmm. Good evening, Mason. Zoe just informed me of additional participants in our weekend. Were you aware of this? She told me earlier this afternoon. It was shortly after we met at the library. I see. I'm concerned she's intending to twist this trip into some vacation. We're getting pictures of the stars for our projects. That's it. The only reason we're staying as long as we are in the... Oh, oh lord. Yawn hit me. The only reason we're staying as long as we are is in case of overcast weather. Would it be so bad if we had a little fun? I tend to find sleeping on the ground to be an unpleasant experience. Well, I'm looking forward to it. I see. I suppose I should make an effort to enjoy myself as well. I've been doing extensive research on camping, so we'll be so be well prepared. I'd have I'd purchased appropriate attire as well. Would you need a set? Oh God, Aiden's clothes, his Boy Scout uniform. What is he talking about? Appropriate attire? Are we going hiking in the mountains? No thanks. I'm think I'm good. Understood. Then I'll wish you a good night. Until tomorrow, then. Night, Aiden. Tomorrow. I know we're just going camping and looking at stars, but somehow it feels like it's more than that. I don't know why it feels this way. I just do. I've only known these guys for a few days, and already they're all so ingrained in my day-to-day. -day. 
There's still so much I don't know about them, or really understand about myself. After this all started, I was half expecting that I'd start moving coffee cups with my mind. I was really hoping I'd manifest an ability that would let me psychically kick Greg in the nuts. Unfortunately, no such luck. I still keep wondering if maybe Zoe made some sort of mistake. Surely I would have noticed something by now. I can't let myself get too worked up in these thoughts, though. I've got a big day ahead of me. It seems you're drifting further in. Don't be deceived. This family you found will only disappoint you. It's only a matter of time before you see them for what they really are. Yeah, thanks, Dante. Oh, oh my god! Oh my god, what timing! <laughs> Alrighty, guys. I'm gonna end the video right there. This has been a new episode of Psychic Connections Aiden's Path. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!